<laughs> I'm in complete darkness, aren't I? <coughs> Hi. It's always tricky. The camera always wants to balance for the lightest part in the screen. I gotta hide it. But then it gets washed out, right? Anyway, uh, welcome back everybody. It's Monday. Uh, let's see, about 13 Celsius, about 63 or 64 Fahrenheit. Nice morning. We're, we have nice chilly mornings lately, which I love. Um, it also, uh, I think it's killing, slowly killing the bugs, having those chilly nights. It's nice to have a, a, a flock of ducks come through the pond. In fact, that's probably a family of ducks. You know, there's mom and a dad in there, and then all the little ones. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> They're all sitting up there watching me now. Hey, what up? What up, my duck? I don't know, can you see them from there? Probably can't, can you? I'm still in darkness, aren't I? Anyway, sh today's shipping up. Let's... All right, do you want to see me for a bit? <laughs> anyway, today's shaping up to be an interesting day. In fact, a, an interesting couple of days uh, are shaping up. Uh, an old friend contacted me about something. Sounded like fun. I said, let's do it. However, this morning, um, we got to get some hiking in. Still working on it. We're going to get some hiking in and then discover some lunch. And then uh, we're out of here. Come, come follow me along. Follow me along. Junebug. Junebug. Come here, little girl. Junebug. Well, you're not in any trouble. Jim Buggy, you getting some water? Getting some water? There you go. There you go, what a good girl. Good job, hello. I have a new stick. Do you like it? It's like the Michael Jordan of sticks, isn't it? It's beautiful. Ontario looks like nice area that guy's got solar panels oh I bet this is a boat I think that's the boat we're taking you haven't figured out what we're doing yet have you hi who are you you're like 14 years older than you should be. <laughs> Do you want to be in a video? I have to go meet my grandmother. Well, it's too late. You're oh. already in it. Okay, well. Okay. There okay. you are. There and there. Thank you. I can't even see anything. 
Anyway, it is some ungodly hour. L literally, it's 5 a.m. My world doesn't hasn't started before 8 a.m. in a long time. Oh, uh, what in the world? To the back by Jeff. Jeff, you're gonna turn a little bit to our left. Your left? Into the boat. Yep. From my left or your left? Your left. Okay. Your left. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to come in for some reason. Oh, turn to your left a little bit more, Jeff. <laughs> Small one. <laughs> it is, it's like a free, straight jab, straight, right, straight, 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 stra
I'm pretty sure I'm not a I'm not a weather man or a weather person, but that is not partly sunny. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, montage of fishing. I have half a salmon and half a rainbow trout in the freezer here. <laughs> Funny story. I was coming in last night. It was dark and, you know, <laughs> on the ATV. And I, sometimes when I strap the uh, the cooler down on the front of the ATV, it just doesn't sit right somehow. Anyway, the, somehow it slipped out of the ratchet strap. The cooler went tumbling on the ground. The lid fell off and the packages of trout and salmon both went tumbling, you know, rolling in the dirt. <laughs> so, I'm there in the in the middle of the night. Uh, I can barely see anything, and I'm scooping everything back in the cooler. <laughs> oh, what a mess! Anyway, the bags held, so <laughs> they're okay. <laughs> anyway, I bet City Girl is really looking forward to that. City Girl really loves fish, so uh, we'll cook those up in interesting ways. <clears throat> anyway, today I got to go back to town. Uh, uh, I, I haven't done any grocery shopping this week, but also I have to do, uh, do some blood work in the local place, uh, local medical place. I'm one of those guys, like, <clears throat> tell me tell me how you are with blood work. When, like, when you have, you know, you're getting blood taken for testing or whatever, are you okay with it? You just sit there and not a problem, who cares? Or do you hate it? I'm one of those, I'm one of those weird guys, like City Girl, she doesn't like doing blood work. She doesn't like needles of any kind. She's horrified. But she'll sit there and she'll do it, and you know, and she's fine. Me, I the thought of it doesn't bother me at all. But I gotta be flat. I gotta be lying flat <laughs> for this. I'll, otherwise, I'll pass out. I don't know what it is. I, I'm one of those guys. As I said, the, the thought of it doesn't bother me. But like, even even if they're like, okay, lie down here, and there's a pillow there, I get rid of that freaking pillow. <laughs> flat. Uh, it's annoying, but. You know, for all the times I went to the hospital for my AFib, you know, to get uh, cardio birded out of it. <laughs> sometimes it's a hassle because sometimes they're really, really busy, you know, tons of people in there. You know, and the nurse will come along and say, okay, I got to hook you up to the uh, uh, intravenous. And I'm like, I got to be flat. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they start looking around for a bed. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. <laughs> and it's like, okay, come, come. In. We're walking down a hallway, another hallway. And <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I don't like doing it, but as I said, the thought of it doesn't matter. But let me know how you are with blood work, because I'm really curious. Uh, <clears throat> and where's my son? I need sunshine. How did we do yesterday? Minus one day zero? That can't be right. We were float mode for an hour and 46 minutes yesterday. That's cool. That means battery's full an hour and 46 minutes because I wasn't here <laughs> anyway we're off I mean I'm off I'm gonna take the dogs on a short hike just so they can do their business and then I'm then I'm off and City Girl's coming today that's a treat it's only Wednesday looking forward to seeing her It's actually like misting now. I can feel it. Can you see it? I did bring my rain jacket. I could put it on. Anyway, I want you guys to hear something. Uh, my ATV is slipping out of gear when I'm going down hills, and I'm just kind of using the engine for brake for braking. So let's see if we can make it happen. And this is the uh, hill down to the Bridge of Doom, the old Bridge of Doom. Let's see if we can make it happen here. I'm sure it will. I'm in high gear. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Okay. Uh, we'll try again somewhere. Maybe on the way back we'll try again. This is stupid. I, I do have my uh, my poncho, my rain poncho. I'm thinking it'll blow over, but the, that cloud is coming this way. 
a big heavy thing. Damn it. <laughs> Cheers to me. Do you want to watch this? I'm going to go through the water here. something really really funny and she didn't want to do it <laughs> she's too professional Where can I put this? back of the, right the door we got a hanger on the back of the door and this apparently lies right now so. and you're off to the moon it's very slowly <laughs> yeah very slowly this is pretty cool This goes flat, right? I'm gonna be like. Mm -hmm. You pass out, do we? Uh, yep. How's that? Pretty good. If I can do a slide on it. Does this okay. go? Does it go more? Or does it? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Well, we can try it. All right. Here we go. This feels like a good one. He's not a nice chair. I don't like it myself. a lot of people like don't want to be filmed when when they're doing their thing i think they think that they're going to be critiqued or whatever like the vet didn't want to be filmed you know doctors don't want to be filmed and it's it's really you know i think they need to understand that this is just a, a day in my life it's not we're not critiquing anything <clears throat> but she was cool she was fun these guys took my spot How is this? How goes it? That's pretty cool. I haven't seen a setup like this. It's uh, it almost feels like a side by side, but it's uh, it's not. It's a single. Yeah. Yeah, they're a pretty good machine. Yeah. Cool. 
pretty sure those guys are going to rob a bank. <sighs> anyway, I'm heading to Subway. I am. Uh, I'm a flip flop guy. I, I've been I've been going for BMTs for years now. And uh, but every number of years I switch. I'm turning into a steak and cheese guy. I think I've turned into a steak and cheese guy again. And it'll be years before I switch back to a BMT. I don't know how many years, 10 years, maybe? <laughs> weird, right? Pretty weird. So, I, I, yeah, steak and cheese. Do you want to toast it? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, so this is Amy, she's the new manager at the subway. And um, she doesn't know me yet. <laughs> But I come in here once a week. Um, and she's really, really good at making subs. I don't know where she came from, but she obviously has a lot of experience. Like, she's so fast. How does she use all uh, Wait, please. Anyway, I just said to her, you don't know me. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal, but to a very small number of people. <laughs> anyway, that's Amy. No green, <coughs> no green olives. He said there's a shortage. You know what kills me is like, they'll like, they'll do that. There'll be no green olives or they'll have no tomatoes or something like that. But you go to the grocery store down the street and they've got lots of green olives. They've got lots of tomatoes. They're not allowed to buy <laughs> stuff like that from anywhere. They have to buy it from corporate. Isn't that crazy? And it's like so much of the year, like the tomatoes are like, I don't know, they're not very good. And like you walk down to the grocery store, there's lots of great tomatoes there. But that's that's how they operate. So I'm trying to eat my sub here, and this guy rudely interrupts me and says, <laughs> I'm, "I'm just kidding." But you went to the bowling alley for yeah. for breakfast. Yeah. And and how was it? Food was amazing. There was only one other, two grand, uh, grandparents and uh, their granddaughter. Yeah. And the food was absolutely perfect and great price. He's like, he came out and he's, he's like, have you had breakfast at the bowling alley? I'm like, that's so weird. Yeah. But, like, they were shut down for a while. They weren't even... Yeah, it's gone back and forth to different people and different owners. And the, and the lady that, that bought it, bought it for passion, not yeah. for business. <laughs> Which for is probably a bad way to buy, buy a business, but it's... She was so was pleasant. It, was it, but it's not just, they don't just serve breakfast, right? Is it an all day menu kind of thing? They have numerous other things, yeah. So now I, she flipped on the lights and it's like the old original bowling alley, a large percentage of, of it's from 1948. So, he's, so, it's so just, you're like eating some bacon and you're bowling some ball, rolling some balls and well, stuff? I didn't bowl, <laughs> but I was intrigued. I haven't bowled in years, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> anyway, you and then you give me your card, you, you collect wooden decoys. Yep. Wait, do you make them? You just collect no. them? Antique wooden decoys. Some of them are 100, 200 years old, and I'm not quite that old yet. Yeah, so can I have one? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about that for a well, couple seconds. I got your I got your website, your email here, so I'm going to hit you up for that. Oh, sure, anytime. I, but my prime, I've been doing that for 47 years now, and collecting decoys and researching them and such. And I've worked with a lot of museums here and in the States, and even in Europe. And my whole objective uh, uh, purpose of it is rather than collecting because I would have had thousands by now if I kept them all yeah um, is helping people identify them and by oh. by helping people identify them you get to see way more so if you have an obsession to enjoy something or find something yeah if you don't have to own it which I don't have to own them um, and you and you have the knowledge you can share that knowledge for free people will take you up on it like crazy and you get to see what's still out there. Well, see, now if you give me one, it, I'm gonna put it on a shelf in my cabin and people will see it okay, forever. Okay, I have one in my car. You gonna give me one right now? Sure. Shit, okay. Are you allowed to say shit on this, YouTube? This is, <laughs> ju well, just be one, I, I stopped this guy from cutting the grass. Well, just be one minute, okay? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't look too perturbed that we're stopping cutting grass. No, it looks like you could take a break. <laughs> there you go. Holy. Wow, so oh. how old is this? Uh, 1930s. 1930s? It's the trail. Like, and what are the eyes? Is that metal? They're tacks. They're, they've been replaced by one of the hunters. And 
all the lead weights and such on the bottom would keep it upright. Holy. So it, when they're in the waves or in the wind, and it flips over, it'll flip back over. So now, uh, do you restore these at all? Like, do you paint them or? The odd time if they're completely lost, but it's nicer if you can keep them original or find them original. That's the ultimate goal. The record for Canadian decoy, which was made just at Belleville down here, yeah. uh, is $218,000. Holy. So, so I don't know if I like you enough to give you this yet, but we'll so see. What is this worth? It's, sometimes it doesn't matter. No, no. I mean, like if you sold this, what is it worth? Anywhere from about 50 to a couple hundred, depending on where okay. you sell it. Like okay. on SD or eBay or one of those, you can get a lot for it if you have a really good story. Just like anything you're selling, if you have a really good story with it or a purpose for somebody to buy it, yeah. money isn't always, or the or the price itself isn't always the issue. I, I've heard about that about artwork. Is it's Absolutely. like it's not necessarily a great painting. It's the history of the painting. Yes. You if know. you found if you bought an old house and you found a Picasso and you didn't see the 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 uh, signature, yeah. you wouldn't put it in your house usually. They're pretty bizarre. And yeah. your wife would get definitely get mad at you, and she'd probably say, throw it out. And as long as it's dusty around the signature. And decoys are kind of the same way. They're <laughs> identified. I've helped with a bunch of books. Um, and um, when they're identified in books or in auction sales, which there is international auction sales with decoys, then that'll kind of set a price, price precedent. So the one that went for 200 and some thousand dollars was about 95% promotion and about 5% the guy. Uh, okay. So yeah, this this looks like the head was knocked off at one point and reattached. Is that right? No, it? it's just ugly. It's just ugly. <laughs> okay. okay, no, no, no. I'm so, sorry. It's folk art. That's what it is. <laughs> folk art. So, so whenever okay. you don't want to say ugly, you can call it folk art. <laughs> okay. So and this is from the 1930s. Yes, yeah, from Montreal. From Montreal. Yeah. You don't have an exact year. You just kind of. 1930s. Not that good. All right. They're, they're most are most are never identified. Most are never have signatures on them. The ones that do have signatures on them are about 98% of the time are decorations. Yeah. But the ones used for hunting, they were just tools. Like who would who would put their mark on a axe handle or a or a hammer yeah, handle? Yeah, that's it's And fair. decoys were just a tool, and that's what makes them unique and, and hard to find, um, because most were thrown out as the plastic ones came in or the cardboard ones came in because yeah. they just didn't use them anymore. So. Yeah. Finding one is, is quite hard, and identifying it is even harder. And, and how did you come across this one? Um, that one came out of a collection, believe it or not, from the Reader's Digest company, yeah, that publishing company, and it was in Montreal on their art display when, when they shut down their their, uh, their buildings. Oh, it, wow. came, it actually came from there. So all of a sudden now the decoy is a little more interesting to you other than an, an ugly-headed creature, well, it's, and it's, it has a story behind it. Absolutely. It's nice to know the history. And now people are going to see this in videos for years. For years and years yeah. and years. <laughs> Who anyway. knows? Who knows? Anyway. But there is there is some, like, there's 800 and some in the Museum of History in Ottawa. I've helped with those a few times. Um, different museums around North America have decoys. Oh, look, I really appreciate that. That's really cool. It's um, my pleasure. I'd like to shake your hand. Oh, wait, you have no hands left. <laughs> I'm going to put down the camera. We'll shake hands. I'm Mitchell Newman. So this is Mitchell, and he was kind enough to turn off his uh, lawnmower so I could have a conversation with him. Well, you got a little break in there, so that's oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Home with my lunch anyways. Yeah, all right. Thanks again. Uh, yeah, have a good take care. So I made a wrong turn. Ended up in Belleville. Which is fine. I got to. Um, I uh, I gotta get new hikers. My um, my hikers. My daily. These are my daily shoes. They're getting a little old, and they they smell really bad for some reason. Anyway, gotta go see Mark. Mark and get about getting some new hikers, and this is Mark's place. Puts his name on the building. Like, this is a bit weird, right? It's a bit weird. Girls just texted me. Can you grab me a bag of salad? President choice something something. Yep, we can do that. Not here though. Mark doesn't have salad. Pretty sure.
I used to do all my shopping at Mark's. Like all, like this complete ensemble is Mark's. I mean, not the, not the fleece, not the black fleece and not this t-shirt obviously. And these pants I bought online. Uh, but I uh, know the socks I also bought online, but otherwise like my underwear from Mark's. You know what? I think I bought my underwear online and as well. So I guess, um, but otherwise it's all Mark's. Is it weird that I, I locked the doors, but I left the window open? Why can't I open it? That should open it like, uh, right? Where's the, that should lock and unlock it, right? <laughs> weird. Are we meeting puppies? <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. Look at these yep, have bit. a good day. Oh, they're so friendly. Thanks. Oh, how old are they? Uh, he just turned two and she's going to be one next month. Oh, you're so cute. And she's full Boston. He's half Boston, half French Boston. Oh, what a cutie. <laughs> what a cutie. What are you up to? All right. <laughs> I have a YouTube channel, so oh, cool. this is Say kind of hi, like a day in my life kind of thing. Right on. You want to be on YouTube? Sure. <laughs> yeah. No Frills is by far the best place to grocery shop because their prices are like really, really good. And this No Frills is like the biggest I've ever seen. They have such a huge selection. You'd be crazy not to shop here. But the weird thing is you got to pay money to use the carts. 25 cents to get a cart. And people want their 25 cents back. It's really, really important. So I think one day I'm gonna come here with like a pocket full of quarters. I'm just gonna get a lot of carts and just hand them out to people and say, you know, give them to the next guy. <coughs> Maybe I'll do that next week, I don't know. So this thing happened. I drink a lot of Gatorade, but uh, I, I don't drink it straight. I, I dilute it with water. I'll take like half to a third of a bottle of Gatorade and I'll top it up. And I brought one of those today with me. In addition to my Dr. Pepper, which I kind of always have with my sub. Oh, crap in here. Anyway, when I was filling up the cooler, I took it out because it was in the cooler and I put it on my bumper and I forgot about it. So, uh, imagine it's rolling around the uh, parking lot at the Value Mart. So, like, what happens if somebody picks it up and says, Hey, hey, free bottle of Gatorade, and they take it home with them. They're in for a surprise, aren't they? I guess that's on them? I don't know. Another thought occurred to me, what if a, like a Value Mart employee picks up that bottle of Gatorade, takes it back in the store and puts it on the shelf? I mean, it's a different color, right? It's not, it's blue, but it's not blue like it, it normally is. But if they don't notice, they put it on the shelf. And what if somebody buys it, takes it home and then they open it up and be weird. They, they might think that somebody tampered with the bottle in Value Mart, which would be really weird. Like, should I call the store and tell them? I don't know what to do. Well, I mean, that's a lot of what ifs, right? Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can make this thing happen I was telling you about earlier. started to happen there. You heard the rattle, that and then it, and then it caught. It happened to me at one other part of the trail as well. Yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down. <laughs>
went in the dark the other night. I kept losing my mail. It's the second piece I found. <laughs> that I haven't even brought my bug jacket with me. Like I, a, couple, a couple of days ago I went out and then I did have my jacket with me but I didn't wear it. It's the first day I've officially said no more bug jacket. And it's, what's the date today? Is it 30th? Uh, yeah. It's the 30th, so I keep saying September 1st. <laughs> We're pretty close. And it's Wednesday today. Yep. City girl here for a long time. That means we'll get her in lots of video. What are you? Are you? Whoa! <laughs> That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to take it. In. Any plans for uh, videos? Oh, I have my. Sorry, my mind was on fish at the moment. Fish. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. I've got a second sound video coming out. Oh, sights and sounds. Yep. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down. So you go about a fruit tray. Apparently, it was at work and nobody ate it. Anyway, we're making pizza. Why am I eating that dog? And this is how we do it at the cabin. Four thin crusts in here. I don't know why there's four. There's usually like two or three. I'm not complaining. Anyway, crust I don't think is that important. It's everything you put on top, which is important. Mm. Why are you doing that? So, I haven't tried this pizza sauce before. I used to get um, pizza from Pizza Pizza. That was my go-to, our go-to. But it's like the last few times we've ordered pizza from there, it's been uh, subpar, very subpar. Wouldn't you agree, dear? Yes. Like It's like they're trying to skimp on toppings and I don't know, maybe, maybe they're using different ingredients, like cheaper ingredients now because it's just it's not good. It's just not good. Anyway, um, this is the next best thing. Like, if you uh, if you just want to quickly do your own pizza, like it only takes like eight minutes to cook. And in fact, you're not even really cooking it; you're just kind of melting the cheese, right? Yeah. And you know what else I like? The barbecue chicken on it. Barbecue chicken, which was in the freezer. Hey, by the way, if you uh, a number of people have commented um, or messaged me or whatever to say that they tried the chicken that I did in that video. And it turned out really, really well. I should get people to like email me pictures. And I'll put them in uh, I'll show them. I'll show them. Do what? You, you what? She did it my innocent gun. She saw the wood duck and it's did it scary. <laughs> yes, it's great. Okay. This this is a little bit creepy. And there's a story behind it, so I'm waiting. What do we put on after <laughs> the wood duck fights back? <laughs> uh, what do we put on after this sauce, dear? Cheese. 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 Cheese.
cheese? Yep. Cheese goes next? Yep. Okay. Definitely. Okay, we're not going to show this whole thing. I just thought I'd talk about it. You want to tell us what your favorite or your go-to pizza is or your pizza joint? Is it a local place or is it a chain? Where do you go for your pizza? Or do you prefer making your own? Yeah, if you make your own, do you make your own dough? You can buy dough. Or anyway. As you can see, it really doesn't matter what the crust is when you load it up like that. <laughs> GoPro, start recording. so much ingredients on your pizza that it's falling off. You ready? No, I'll bring it to you, it's okay. I'm gonna take a bite for you guys. Oh, the, the crisp went all soft. That's unusual, right? Barbecue chicken. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it's gonna take you the piece that I'd already bitten into. Huh. I saw it. You what? I said hot. You never used to snort. Are you nice and forth or? Yep. One more thing. Is it good? It's really good. <laughs> Cool morning, it's about uh, 15 Celsius, about uh, 60 Fahrenheit. It was even cooler, it was 11 Celsius earlier. Anyway, about to take the uh, new shoes hiking, start breaking them in. Um, I'll tell you, there's only one secret to not having stinky shoes. First of all, if you already have stinky shoes, you can't take the stink out of them, they're done, throw them out. But the secret is, you put odor readers in them, like day one, and you swap out new ones every month, once a month. I also spray them with, a little bit with Lysol as well. But that's the secret. And I tell you what, an interesting thing, like, I haven't, I stopped growing uh, pretty much in my final year of high school. I haven't grown in any way, <laughs> tall or big or bigger hands or whatever, except my feet. My feet were size 10 when I left high school. And I remember in my early 20s, these are odor eaters, and you can kind of see on the backs there, um, they've got lines so that, I mean, these are by default 
Is that a 12? That can't be right. Looks like these by default are a size 12. And I remember I was cutting them down. You cut along the lines to make them the, the size of your feet, right? The size of your shoes. Um, I no longer cut them down. In fact, now they're too small. <laughs> I was a size 10 when I left high school. These are a size 14. Does that happen to anybody else? Like your feet keep growing? It seems weird to me. Like I don't cut these, yeah. <laughs> and they just go in there like that. And they absorb the crap coming out of your feet. Uh, as I said, I, I also um, spray with Lysol. Kill the, uh, kill whatever bacteria is just sitting there, uh, like after my height. Yeah, it's too small. Can you get like oversized over eaters? Doesn't go right to the toe. Anyway, we're going for a hike. Nice day for it. Beautiful day for it. Get the dog some exercise. Come on, man. Oversized overeaters. Is that a thing? All right. Let's go. Willow's starting to show her age. Like eight and a half now, or uh, nine? Are you turning nine? <sighs> She's uh, pretty slow on the way back. Although if she hears something like a squirrel out there, she'll be off and running. Uh, this is our second trip. So I think that's a little over six six kilometers. <sighs> I need to do the math on this. It's either going to be <laughs> in and out once or twice or three times or four times or five times I should know the numbers already so yeah I don't know. six times 1.37 somebody do the math uh, city girl is at the cabin she actually has to work today um, that's how she came a day earlier than she was going to. So it's a work from home day. It is wonderful walking around here without a bug jacket on. I had a deer fly bothering me once. <laughs> Just once. Um, but we've been good since. New boots seem fine. They're a little stiff, of course, but that's what you get from new boots. Just gotta work them in. I don't know how she doesn't kill herself. You should see her running around here sometimes. Just blasting through. And these stupid chipmunks. Not many squirrels around, they're mostly chipmunks. These stupid chipmunks. They, they see the dogs and they start chittering like and the dogs of course go oh there must be a chipmunk there like I'm sure it's some danger signal that they do like oh crap there's dogs over here dogs over here but it's to the dogs it's just like come get me I'm over here that doesn't make any sense how did evolution do that <laughs> weird We're winding down towards the end of this video, but um, a couple of things before we go. 
uh, Ray called me a couple of days ago and asked uh, if I was going to be putting new panels on my roof before winter time. <laughs> He's looking out for me, right? Because uh, we've talked about this a bunch of times. Um, I want more panels on my roof and he says we can do it. And I have another charge controller to ex accept more panels. So I have everything I need. Um, I just need some of Ray's time, of course. But I said, Ray, I, I don't have the money for it. Uh, this year has kind of whacked me for um, taxes. And now, not only did I get hit with like three different taxes I wasn't expecting, but now they want um, to, they want the interim remittance of taxes, like three, two or three times a year. They want me to give them money just in case I have to pay taxes next year. Uh, anyway, I said to Ray, I don't have the money. Uh, unless he wants to spot me a few panels, because I know he just bought a truckload of panels. He's got all kinds of them, and I think they're all 400 watt Canadian solar panels. Uh, there's a few challenges. Um, the new panels are slightly different size. They're slightly bigger than the ones I have here, for some reason. And these old panels um, have a different mounting, different rails system, so I guess he'd have to replace the rail system as well. Anyway, um, he said uh, he needs the dimensions of my roof. Um, and that's not hard because I was able to go into uh, Google SketchUp where I designed the whole cabin uh, in the first place and just kind of uh, use the measuring tool in there and measure it up. It turns out that it's from peak to drip edge it's about 13 feet 4 inches and then uh, from side to side it's about 30 feet. Um, which makes a lot of sense. The cabin is 28 eight feet wide but there's a foot, one foot overhang on each on each side. So 30 feet, which is exactly 10 of those sheets of metal roofing. They're three feet wide, not including the tiny little bit of overhang. Uh, so yeah, 30 feet. Um, actually, I think it was like 30 feet, two inches. I'm not sure why. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, and then the, the only weird part is the chimney, because that chimney's not in any design documents that I had. I literally, when I got that wood stove in here, I kind of eyeballed it. I said, well, it'll go right between these two I-beams. <laughs> and then when I got up to the second floor, I, I used a marker on a stick and I kind of traced it around the chimney. Just, that was my that was my hole in the in the roof. In fact, it was more of a ooh. Does that make sense? Anyway, I went out there and I kind of eyeballed it and measured it from the side of the, uh, the cabin. It was 42 inches from the side of the cabin, so give it another foot. Um, 54 inches from the edge of the roof. Uh, I'm not sure about up and down. Ray asked me to uh, take the drone up and uh, put it perpendicular to the roof. And then kind of uh, so he could see exactly, you know, where the existing system is and where the chimney is. Um, so I don't have that, that measurement from where the chimney is from the bottom or where it is from the top. Um, hopefully he can get that from the drone footage. If not, I'll go up there with a the measuring tape. I'll get the ladder out, go there, up there with a the measuring tape and I'll figure it out. Um, but I'm sure he can do it. I, I'm absolutely certain that there, there's two support uh, rods that keep the chimney from falling over. I'm sure I'll have to move one of them somewhere. somewhere. I, that won't be a big deal. They're, I think they're extendable a little bit. And, Anyway, I can move that. But anyway, I don't know how we landed on 15 new panels. 15 new panels at 400 watts each gives me, what is that, 6 kilowatts? That would be awesome, because right now I have 2,160 watts. 6 kilowatts is a huge upgrade. Like, almost three times the size, which would be wonderful. But I don't know how we landed on 15 panels. Because we, I mean, they have to be grouped. So it's either going to be three groups of five or five groups of three which in either way is not an even number, like three groups. I guess you combine two of them, keep one of them, two, two of them into one charge control and one of them into the other. I don't know, I gotta talk to him about it. I don't know how we landed on three groups of five. I don't know if 15 panels can fit up there, then maybe it's 12 panels, I don't know. Uh, but Ray can figure it out. Anyway, I thought I'd end this video with uh, some interesting tidbit of drone footage actually. Um, when I had the, obviously early in the video you saw us out fishing and you saw some drone shots. Um, bringing that drone into land was a real challenge because the boat is moving and I didn't want Kent to stop the boat because we had four lines in the water. And I'm trying to fly the drone in. Um, first of all, it would not come any lower than it was because it was detecting, it, it's got sensors all over it, right? It was detecting the boat and the people and stuff. 
and there was nowhere to land it, so we had to grab it out of the air, which I've done many times here at the cabin. You just fly the drone in, you grab it. Uh, it tries to go away because the sensor says, oh my god, there's something right there. And then when it can't get away, it, it gives up and it's landed, right? And the thing is so fine-tuned, pushing it forward a little bit, pushing the drone forward a little bit, it goes, <laughs> or backwards a little bit, <laughs> so for and I had Jeff trying to grab it. <laughs> And of course, I helpfully told them, be careful, you'll lose a nail if you hit one of those rotors. Anyway, take a, take a watch, take a look, and uh, that'll be the end of this video. Uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out.